Use after freeze are a common type of vulnerability category found and exploited in modern operating systems. The general idea of use after free is that some object is allocated in memory and then the object is subsequently freed back to the allocator once the program has finished using it. However, an attacker can come in and cause the program to mistakenly use the freed object after it has been freed. If between the free and the use, the object was reallocated by an attacker, it is possible for control flow to be subverted or for other exploitation primitives to be achieved. This is because the attacker was able to reallocate the object with arbitrary contents, thus essentially faking the entire object and controlling various fields such as function pointers or other data. Physical UAFs are a subcategory of this bug class, first publicly discussed in a series of vulnerability reports from Felix PB for bugs in the iOS kernel. The idea here is rather than some object being the target of the use after free, we go one step deeper and achieve a use after free condition on a physical memory page. In this video, we're going to dive into the details of the first physical UAF vulnerability reported by Felix, known as FizzPuppet. But first, to properly understand the vulnerability here, we're going to need to look at some prerequisite concepts on how the XNU kernel manages virtual memory. When an app is running on your iPhone, the iOS kernel makes use of several data structures to manage the lifetime and execution of the process. On the MUC side of the iOS kernel, we have a task structure per process which holds data representing threads, register states, IPC ports, and the topic of this video, virtual memory mappings. The task's map field points to a nested structure known as a VM map. A VM map contains multiple VM map entry structures stored as a linked list, each representing some slice of the virtual memory addressable by this process with specified start and end addresses. VM map entries have a nested structure known as a VM object, which is an even lower level structure describing where to get physical pages from. VM objects can have multiple VM page structures which directly map to physical pages of memory. New VM map entry structures can be created and added to a process's VM map using the function VM allocate. VM allocate is a MIG routine used to allocate some specified amount of virtual memory and map it into the process. We can specify our own task port, the size of the memory block which we wish to allocate, which is a multiple of the page size, and a flags value such as VM flags anywhere to tell the kernel that we don't care where this new allocation is mapped to and to just use an address at random. The start address of this newly allocated region will be returned in the address variable that was passed by reference. Internally, what VM allocate does is create a new VM map entry structure in the kernel representing this newly allocated virtual region. It inserts this new VM map entry structure into the task's VM map, which now allows it to become addressable memory within this process. At this point, the new virtual memory has been logically mapped into our process. However, there's not actually any physical backing behind it yet. When we actually try to read or write to an address within this newly allocated region, a page fault will occur in the kernel. The kernel will catch this fault and it will proceed to look for the VM object that backs this VM map entry structure and retrieve physical pages to cover the virtual address we're accessing. If the backing VM object doesn't already have any resident pages, new pages need to be retrieved from the free list and added to this VM object. At this point, new page table entries are inserted into our task's PMAP for the same physical page. Once this is done, we now do have physical memory back in our address and therefore we can read and write to it. Once we're done using this new allocated region, we can use VM deallocate to free this memory. We pass in the virtual address and the size of the memory to deallocate. The kernel will then free the VM map entry structure associated with the virtual address range and it will unlink it from our task's VM map. At this point, we also remove the page table entries that were added to our task's PMAP using PMAP remove options. The FizzPuppet exploit allows us to cleverly manipulate this process such that on PTE removal, one PTE is unintentionally left in our task's PMAP, but the corresponding page is simultaneously released back to the page allocator, ready to be used by some other task or the kernel itself. With this dangling PTE entry, we can construct powerful primitives once the page gets reallocated for something more important, such as a kernel data structure or a kernel object. FizzPuppet exploits an integer overflow bug in the function vmmapEnterMemObjectHelper, which is a function in the XNU kernel reachable by calling vmmap from user space. vmmap, the function, not the data structure that we already described, is another way a process can map a region of memory into its task. Unlike vmAllocate, which asks the kernel directly to allocate new memory, the vmmap function allows us to pass in a memory object reference as an argument, 
which essentially is a mock port that refers to some already allocated memory in the kernel. It will then proceed to create a VMAP entry for this memory object and then map that into our task. We can allocate a memory object ourselves using a different function, muck memory object memory entry 64. Similarly to the VM allocate call, we can choose the size of our memory object and then the kernel will create a VM map named entry, which our returned port directly refers to. This named entry has a back-in VM map copy structure, which points to a VM map entry structure and also a VM object. But we'll come back to that later. Let's first take a look at the actual integer overflow itself, which occurs as a result of a missing check on the size value passed in to the VM map call. The third argument to the call to VM map should be the size in bytes to map into the task. But with fizzpuppet, we set this value to minus one. The kernel wants this size in bytes to be a multiple of the page size, so it uses the macro VM object round page to attempt to round up this value using the page mask. This macro expands to this simple line of code here. For typical size values that might be passed in, this macro works exactly as expected and rounds up the value. However, since we pass in minus one, which in hex is represented by a 64-bit value of all Fs, we reach a case that is not accounted for. The first part of the macro adds the page mask, which is FFF, which already causes our value to wrap around to FFE. Then when we take FFE and and this with the inverse of the page mask, we're left with zero. Both map size and size are both set to zero at this point. Weirdly enough, further down in the code, there is actually a branch that gets taken because the size is equal to zero. I say weirdly enough because it doesn't seem possible that this branch could ever be reached under normal usage of the function, since the initial size that is passed into this function gets explicitly checked in the very beginning if it is equal to zero, and if so, an invalid argument is returned. So the only way we can ever reach this block of code is by triggering this integer overflow bug, which of course should not be there. I would assume the reason for this is that this is actually just some legacy code left behind since this kernel is very old, dating all the way back to 1985. But anyway, this branch does get taken and then a new size value is calculated based on the named entry. We take the size of the named entry minus the offset into this VM object, which we can also specify in the call to VM map. And whatever the result of that is, is assigned to the size variable. Further down the code, VM map enter is called and this new map size is passed in. The kernel then at this point proceeds to create a new VM map entry with this size, which it maps into our tasks address space. So how does fizzpuppet exploit this? What do we actually want the size value to be? Let's take a look back at creating a memory object. The fizzpuppet exploit calls muck memory object memory entry 64 and passes an unaligned size value as the size argument. Unaligned meaning it is not a multiple of the page size, which is hex 4000. This is fine and the internal VM map named entry structure that's created for this memory object has its size field set to the unaligned value in this case of hex 8001. The problem however occurs in relation to VM map entry structures which are always expected to be page aligned. Under normal execution, the kernel uses the macro VM object round page, as we already saw, to round up any size value, such that when it creates a new VM map entry, the start and end fields are always page aligned. However, due to the integer overflow, we've managed to subvert the flow to some legacy code, which calculates the size based on the size of a VM map named entry structure which we control. So by taking the named entry structure size of 8001 and subtracting one page, hex 4000, we are left with a size of hex 4001, which is not page aligned. This size is then used in the call to VM map enter as the map size, which proceeds to create a new VM map entry structure and adds it to our task VM map. At this point, we have a VM map entry structure mapped into our task that has a page aligned start address, but a page unaligned end address, a condition that should not normally occur. Next, fizzpuppet simply triggers a page fault in both of the newly mapped pages by mem setting some random bytes. If you remember from before, this triggers the kernel to pull new pages from the free list and add them to the underlying VM object and also add two page table entries into our tasks pmap representing these pages. At this point, we're only one step away from creating the dangling page table entry scenario. All we need to do is unmap the special VM map entry structure that has the unaligned end. We call VM deallocate with the address of this region and a size of two pages. In the kernel, the function VM map delete successfully unlinks this VM map entry from our tasks VM map. 
However, when PMAP remove options attempts to remove the corresponding page table entries for the two pages covered by that VMAP entry, another problem occurs. The start and the end fields from the VMAP entry are subtracted from one another to calculate the difference or the amount of pages that need to be removed. Because of the unalignment, end minus start results in a value of hex 4001, but there's actually immediately a right shift operation after this, which causes us to lose the least significant bits. The kernel doesn't recognize this because it's expecting to work with page aligned start and end addresses, and so it just proceeds as normal to call the function pmap remove range options to perform the actual page table entry removals. Because our value was essentially truncated, only the first of the two page table entries gets removed, leaving one dangling page table entry still in our task's pmap. To free the corresponding pages back to the free list, we just need to destroy the back in VM object, which at this point still actually has one remaining reference, which is the named memory entry from before. To solve this, we can just call muck port deallocate with the named entry port to deallocate that named entry and all of the structures associated with it. The VM object at this point gets destroyed and the two VM pages that were in the VM object get put back on the free list ready for reuse. One last fix up is required before we can actually make use of the dangling page table entry. We no longer have any mapping in our VM map that covers the address range that the page table entry falls into because we just unmapped it. So now all we need to do is make a very normal call to VM allocate but with the flags VM flags fixed to allocate at a specific address, the address of the old range, and a size of two pages. This will create another VM map entry structure covering the virtual address range that includes the dangling page table entry. At this point, we have achieved the dangling page table entry scenario and exploitation from this point on can be done in a number of ways. The general idea is to try to get the kernel to reuse that dangling page for something very important of its own, which we can then use to construct different primitives and achieve stable kernel read and write. A blog post from Alfie CG uses an IO surface spray method to reallocate that page for IO surface kernel objects, which he then uses to build stable read and write primitives. But that is the topic of another video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. All relevant links will be in the description below. And of course, full credit goes to Felix PB for these bugs themselves and the original detailed write-ups, which were essential in the creation of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.